John H. Walton's book, The Lost World of Genesis 1, Ancient Cosmology and the Origins Debate, The Lost World Series, Volume 2, is a thought-provoking and insightful work that delves into the interpretation of the Genesis creation account. In this literary analysis, I will examine the key themes and arguments presented in Walton's book. Walton's central thesis challenges the common understanding of the Genesis creation narrative. He argues that the ancient Hebrew cosmology, as reflected in the text, differs significantly from modern scientific accounts of the origins of the universe. Rather than focusing on the material creation of the world, Walton contends that Genesis 1 is primarily concerned with the functional creation of the world, emphasizing the ordering and assigning of functions to the various elements of creation. One of the key concepts in Walton's argument is the idea of the cosmic temple. He suggests that the act of creating the world in six days mirrors the way ancient cultures built temples as places for deity to dwell. In this interpretation, God is not merely constructing the physical world but is establishing a cosmic sanctuary in which he will take up residence. This view aligns with the ancient Near Eastern perspective, where temples were regarded as the dwelling places of the gods, and it brings a fresh perspective to the creation narrative in Genesis. Furthermore, Walton addresses the Hebrew word bara, often translated as create. He argues that this word is not necessarily linked to the creation of matter but is better understood as an act of bringing something into a functional role. In other words, God is assigning functions to the various elements of the cosmos, rather than bringing them into existence from nothing. This interpretation challenges the common notion of ex nihilo creation and underscores the functional aspect of creation as emphasized in the text. Walton also discusses the nature of the days in the Genesis creation account. He suggests that these days are more about God's activities in setting up the functions of the world rather than a strict temporal framework. In this view, the days are not necessarily meant to be taken as 24-hour periods but as a structuring device to emphasize the order and purpose of God's creative acts. This interpretation allows for a reconciliation between the biblical account and scientific understandings of the age of the universe. The author's argument extends to the idea of the image of God. He contends that humans are not made in God's image through a physical resemblance but rather through their role as functional representatives of God on earth. This perspective connects the creation of humanity with the overall theme of functional creation in Genesis 1. One of the most significant contributions of Walton's book is its impact on the origins debate. By emphasizing the ancient Near Eastern context of the Genesis narrative, he invites readers to consider the text from a different cultural and theological perspective. This approach challenges the dichotomy between science and religion by highlighting the functional, rather than material, aspects of creation. In doing so, Walton offers a way for individuals to hold their faith while engaging with modern scientific understandings of the origins of the universe. Walton's book is not without its criticisms. Some argue that his interpretation may oversimplify the text or downplay the idea of material creation. Additionally, some theologians may find it challenging to reconcile his perspective with traditional interpretations of the Bible. However, his work encourages a nuanced and scholarly approach to understanding Genesis 1, which can enrich theological discourse and foster a more robust engagement with the relationship between faith and science. In conclusion, The Lost World of Genesis 1 by John H. Walton presents a compelling reinterpretation of the Genesis creation narrative. By highlighting the ancient Near Eastern context and emphasizing the functional rather than material aspects of creation, Walton challenges conventional interpretations and opens the door for a more nuanced discussion of the origins debate. His work encourages readers to reconsider the relationship between science and faith, 
and it provides a valuable contribution to the ongoing conversation about the intersection of religion and contemporary scientific understandings.